Yeah, well, I, I, Clive's kind of a big-time fisherman. I haven't had the, quite the same exposure, so I'm kind of at the, I'm on the second on the second fiddle on this type of stuff. Fine, Bob. I'm glad we got this uh, set up properly to begin with, that I'm going to be in first position and uh, <laughs> catching the largest fish, and you can get a picture of it. Bob Mills, age 82, has been fishing since the age of six. Fishing has been an important part of Bob's life, and he takes pride in being able to bring a fish home to the table. Well, There's a beautiful scene out here today. I don't see all those boats around here, though. So what's running up here now? Sockeye? No, it can't be sockeye. It's probably chum. Bob was self-employed for most of his life. He opted for an early retirement with a plan to enjoy more fishing. Well, we used to deal with uh, Bob Mills' firm. In fact, we still do. And it's uh, Tuffery Mills. And I think that Bob Mills was always upset that his name came second. So he... Uh, quit his uh, relationship with his partner 20 years ago. And so he used to handle all of our insurance needs for our hotel and different projects we were doing. I'm in the hotel and restaurant business and also uh, developer business. And, but then he's gone into retirement. Bob never was one to be guided. He has always taken pride in being able to do it all himself. I've done a bit of river fishing before, not quite this stuff. Of course, first time for sturgeon. But that big sucker that keeps getting out here, I mean, they let him go very carefully so that he can be caught again. Clive Piercy, age 76, made his fortune as a developer and hotel owner. Still is active in the business and relies on a great staff to keep the operations going. This wonderful lady here, Brenda Aulis, is the manager of my hotel and she's got 150 and 120 employees. Yes, she we, knows we have. First name, she knows them all on a first name basis. She does. Including we're five. a class act, and she keeps telling me that I've got to know my boundaries, so I'm kept on a very short leash here. She runs the whole show, and without her, I'd be nothing. Clive is eccentric, fun, unique, very, very um, appreciated by the staff because he um, keeps us on our toes. He's always got something new up his sleeve, something new that he might... Uh, ring out for the staff to enjoy. Clive's hotel, the Chateau Victoria, features Clive as part of Clive's Lounge, a well-known Victoria martini bar. A wonderful lounge here, all the different alcohols I've got, malt whiskeys, etc. And here's this lovely serving lady is Robin, who I'm supposed to keep my distance with because she's so attractive. Clive loves to flirt with the ladies. He considers himself you know what she's saying? harmless. Don't you get too close. That's what she say, don't you get too close. <laughs> the walls of Clive's bar showcase many of Clive's trophies, paintings and memorabilia pertaining to the fisherman Clive Piercy. Here's a portrait of myself, done by David Goatley also. And it shows me really happy, relaxed, really enjoying myself because I'm Clive likes cruiser. to play big fish and has traveled the world employing the best of guides to put him into heart-pounding monster fish. We have a wonderful 20-pound Arctic char I caught uh, way up north in the Arctic Circle on Victoria Island. And it's over 20 pounds and uh, a beautiful and spawning coloration Arctic char, which gave me an excellent fight for 30 or 40 minutes on very light tackle. and. Uh, it's a beautiful mount, and it's a large fish, and there's a fishing competition there that week, and I got the largest fish during the week. The only thing that Clive and Bob really have in common is their passion to fish. Every other aspect of these two personalities is at a contradiction of each other. For the first time, Clive and Bob will be fishing together for a full year. These two grumpy old fishermen. 
Anglers from around the world make plans yearly to fish the Fraser River with the hopes of playing a sturgeon that can exceed a thousand pounds. From June to October, some of the world's largest salmon runs migrate up the mighty Fraser to spawn. They supply nutrient-rich carcasses for the river and the surgeon. What are they fishing for? Uh, coho and chum. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are getting pretty ripe, really. Oh, well, the coho are all fresh. Even the chum come in fresh until December. Sturgeon have an immense yeah, amount of power and speed river. and are capable of peeling 200 yards of line off your reel in seconds. Even though sturgeon are mostly bottom dwellers, their fighting ability can be compared to that of any big game sport fish, and they aren't referred to the poor man's marlin for nothing. Their aerial displays are an awesome thing to see as they launch their massive bodies out of the water in an attempt to throw the hook. A big fish can take well over an hour to fight. The question is, would Bob or Clive have the stamina to play such a fish? Oh, you could have that for lunch, sure. <laughs> yeah, I better separate the two coolers now so you don't get confused. <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, I'll let Clive sample it first. I've had people open up the bait cooler thinking it was lunches. And yeah, they were very close to Vomiting. chumming the water. <laughs> Sturgeon will migrate and actually will go back into the ocean and we'll swim down. We've had ones that we've tagged in the Fraser River that they found in the Columbia River. So they'll idea. literally travel all over the place. And they, they're the one, one of the few fish that can go salt fresh, salt fresh with little trouble. Oh, really? Yeah. I never, I never well, another understood. one of the reasons why they've survived the test of time so well. well that and they'll eat that. But you, don't <laughs> see, you don't seem to ever catch them out on the salt water though, do no, you? No, they don't. I don't, I, I don't know if it's they'd stop feeding when they're on the travel or what, oh, what it is, yeah. <laughs> you would think halibut fishing, you would probably get a few, yeah. you know. Rod Toth, born and raised on Canada's west coast, has spent his entire adult life chasing down the many game fish available in British Columbia. I like to give him a treat. So I'm going to slip a fish into his mouth, put it in his mouth. There you go, buddy. Rod's passion and enthusiasm for fishing is second to none, and he truly enjoys every day he spends on the water. From this passion comes two very successful businesses, Bent Rod Lures and Bent Rod Charters. His jigs and spinners are designed to catch fish on the river. So yeah, what you got here is a cutthroat trout. And his charter business utilizes his knowledge and techniques in chasing down sturgeon, salmon, trout, and steelhead for his many clients. Yeah. Now we're gonna make up a little bait sack. Oh, a good old... Is that your wife's uh, nylon oh, socks? Those are mine. Those are yours? Those are mine, yeah. <laughs> when I'm done with them, I use them for sturgeon. They have a, men have a better smell, right? So, for sturgeon anyhow. There you go. Well, I get some funny looks when I'm in the store buying 15 packs of them. <laughs> and they think they're for me because I get the 4X size. <laughs> and they're talking to themselves, they're, 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 they're winking at one another, and this guy buying a pile of stuff. Yeah. In India, they sure, use... sure, they're for your wife, buddy. Yeah. In India, they use used feminine stockings, nylons, and they strain their teeth through it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And as the day goes on, you know, they just keep more, adding more tea leaves to the big pot, and then they strain it through the sock. As the day goes on, uh, the tea gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah, well, Clive has had a lot of international experience in fishing, traveled up to the Arctic Circle um, and likes, and of course has uh, top grade guides, which tend to make it much easier. When you're fishing on your own, you're kind of more on your own. Most of my experience has been on southern Vancouver Island, although I have been to Alaska and up to the Queen Charlottes many, many times. Luckily, this year we're still allowed to keep two chum salmon a day because that's what we're using here for eggs chum. Mm -hmm. For those of us with the wisdom to save it early and freeze it, we're doing good. Ah, there you go. They were the wise ones. I, I tend to, to get on it right away when I start catching them. And mm -hmm. You might as well if you know you're going to need it. Yeah. You just never know these days when they're going to close something down. And when does the chum fishing start? Well, it usually starts around October 1st. But oh. This year they're about two to three weeks behind schedule. So oh. they're just starting to get in the river now pretty good. Late season? Everything's been three weeks late, all our salmon this year. Yeah, you're probably right because my partner who's been going to soup for years, he says, this, we are really late, he says. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. 
Why is the cold? Everywhere, even down the, down in Washington and Oregon, not the same thing. Everything, everything's late. Do they give a reason for that? Weather, happy. weather, because we had that really, really, really cool spring. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and a lot of the rivers didn't fresh set until almost into late July. So, oh, so the fish probably know that that's how they do their timing by the fresh set. And the, their time the, clock. Uh, yeah. Well, they say that they can smell their home rivers even out yes, in the ocean through I know part. It's, it's almost unbelievable. So yeah, they probably didn't get the smell until later in the season. And then we're also noticing some really big coho and some really big fish because they yes. stayed out extra. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, we had one good day a couple of weeks ago out there. We caught our eight fish. We caught six hatchery and two wild ones. And we we're only allowed to have wild as of October the 1st. No hatchery? Oh, okay. Huh? No hatchery? And a hatchery up to that time, yes, yeah. you can you can keep your hatchery, but you, you're you only allowed three. Well, when the season of the first, uh, you're allowed um, three hatchery and one wild. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. And That's one day we went out there and we got them all within two hours. We said, my God, fishing is incredible. Come back two days later and we hardly pulled a bite. Oh, yeah, isn't that how it goes with traveling fish, eh? Yeah. Not only is Bob hard of hearing, but he keeps regurgitating his stories over and over and over again. But still, we enjoy fishing. Hard of hearing. If you look in Clive's ears, you don't see earplugs, you see hearing aids. That tells you something. <laughs>